Kush, kush, kush. Hi, and happy Halloween. Today, I am talking all about how to have great Halloween sex, including role play, perhaps as one of your all time favorite pop icons. Let's get started. Okay, so Halloween is really, really special to me. It's my favorite time of year, it's Scorpio season, and it is the opportunity that we all get at least once per year to become something or someone other than what we usually are. Is the famous quote from Mean Girls goes, Halloween is the only time of year a girl is allowed to dress as slutty as she wants and other girls aren't allowed to say anything. I know that I misquoted that, but let's just let's just keep rolling. And there's a reason that Halloween for a lot of people has become about dressing up as anything but adding the word sexy in front of it, like sexy Toy Story characters or sexy household appliances or sexy crayons. I don't know. I don't know that any of those actually exist, but Halloween is a sexy time because you know what? Dressing up and becoming something other than what we usually are is really fun. It's really creative. It's really playful. And those are three qualities that we desire for sex. Fun, play, and creativity are really what makes great sex great. And Halloween is an opportunity to do that. Now, the other reason that Halloween is a great opportunity for awesome sex is that it's all about the other side, the space between life and death, our 3D world and the spirit realm. Halloween is supposed to allow us to connect with those things and those parts of us that we usually do not want to face. That includes scary things, the parts of us that feel like monsters, like vampires. It's a opportunity to explore the shadow side of all of us. And almost nothing exists more in our collective shadow than sex and sexuality. So role play and Halloween give us an opportunity to turn up the volume and bring this extra fun sizzle to sex that could also be in the form of say, experimenting with other stuff, domination and submission, bondage, pain and pleasure. These are all really, really on theme for Halloween and I don't want you to miss this opportunity to get into some really fun stuff. So I'm gonna give you my step-by-step -step guide for role play even if you are super shy and I am going to cover some of the most common role play mistakes so that even if things do go kind of sideways and it gets super awkward when you suddenly forget that you were supposed to be playing a doctor and go back to playing a dad, you can recover and get all the benefits of kinky Halloween fun. Okay, but before I give you the step-by-step -step guide, what I need you to do is go down beneath this video and click like. And while you're down there, leave a comment of what you are going to dress up for on Halloween. I saw a study recently that said 64% of American adults dress up on Halloween. I hope that that includes you. And if not, at least write what you would dress up as if you were going to role play this Halloween. Now, I probably wouldn't dress up as Brittany, but um, but I did once play the sacrificial virgin at a Halloween play party. Listen, the options are truly, truly endless. All right, step one, if you've been around this channel, this is not gonna surprise you one bit. Communicate. Talk to your partner beforehand, especially if the role play scenario that you want to act out involves some prep work or surprise or violence. Don't just throw on a balaclava and break into the room and kidnap your partner. That's not cool. That's, I can't even believe I have to say it, but it's not cool, don't do it. But you also don't wanna like show up in your doctor costume, like ready to give them a physical if you haven't given them at least a heads up and some kind of indication of, I'd like to role play with you. Now, if you're shy, there's different ways that you can bring up your fantasy. A lot of people recommend saying something on the lines of like, I had a dream the other night that you were a sexy teacher from my college and I was your naughty student staying after class. I love that idea. I don't think you necessarily have to throw in the I had a dream, but if it makes it easier for you, well, far be it for me to say otherwise. Go ahead, do whatever you gotta do to bring it up. I also really love to bring up things like, you know what would be really hot if we did some role play? And here are some examples that I personally would be into. 
boss and assistant, doctor and nurse, sex worker and client, porn star, stripper. And there are many, many, many common role play fantasies that you may want to act out. One of my favorite all time role plays is boss and assistant. Once I was putting away some filing in my filing cabinet and my partner came up behind me and um, started to, to make some moves and I went with it and started to call him boss and told him not to take advantage of his secretary like that. Well, I was very, very clearly giving him the A, okay, I totally consent to this. Let's get freaky, Mr. Boss guy. That was hot. Uh, we have gym teacher and coach or student, college professor and student, naughty teacher and student, doctor and nurse, hitchhiker and truck driver. When doing research for this video, I found out that's a very common role play. I would not have personally guessed it. I also found a website that recommended like yoga teacher and yoga student, which like I could, I vibe, I, I, I vibe with that. Oh, another personal favorite is teenagers or reenacting losing your virginity, acting like your parents are in the other room and you're not trying to get caught. Oh, another particularly sexy one is sex worker and client. Like you pretend that you're paying your partner for sex, get the money out, have her put on a wig and some sexy lingerie and exchange sex for cash. That is so stinking hot. And I hope you realize that all of these don't require a ton of setup. In fact, outside of communicating that you're open to it, the only other thing that you really need to do to get ready is express any boundaries that you have. As with any other new sex stuff, role play requires you to discuss your boundaries first. To say to your partner, you know what, that would be really hot, but this, this action would be going too far. Um, I really like that, but I don't think I want you to call me any derogatory or mean names, or I only want you to call me derogatory or mean names. Or you know what, that scenario that you've just described, that may be triggering for me because you know I did get sexually assaulted by my boss one time, and I think for me to make that work, it would have to be like this. Communication from the very beginning assures that everyone is gonna have the best possible time. Can you, I bet you can hear my costume. Where were we? None of the scenarios that I've described or possibly many of the scenarios that you can come up with on your own require even so much as a costume. In fact, you can usually just start using language in order to get into your roles like I did with the boss and the secretary. It's not like we planned that. You just called me bent over at a filing cabinet and we rolled with it. My point is that you don't have to overly complicate it. You already have everything that you need in your naughty little mind in order to make role play successful. But once you do get into it and you are familiar and comfortable with using those words, feel free, and nay, feel encouraged to step it up by adding costumes, wigs, even a different context. In fact, one very popular role play I personally love and totally get behind is pretending that you meet your spouse as two totally different people at a hotel bar. Go up, get a room. I highly recommend if you're gonna do this that you totally make up a persona throw on a wig or do something, you know, do some like, I don't know, some, some temporary tattoos or something, like really get into character. And don't just show up and make it up on the spot. Develop your character beforehand. You will be so glad that you did. Think about this character's backstory, the things that they say, the way that they speak, how they carry themselves. Think about the way that they have sex. And when you get into the bar or the lobby or the car or whatever, once you get in there, stay in character. Now, it can be awkward. I swear to you, it can be really strange. Totally, totally get that. And that awkwardness can sometimes cause us to want to break and giggle and like, oh, this is, I, I just want to like go back to being me for a minute. And if you have to go back to being you so that you can like say, no, I'm not into that, safe word, that was too far, great, do that. I'm not saying that you cannot break character. There's really good reasons that you may need to break character. But I highly recommend that you resist it as much as possible, stay in character, fight the urge to giggle, fight the urge to allow that awkwardness. Look, I have a lot of trouble performing as anything other than me. That's why you only ever see me as Caitlin V. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel because there's a whole lot of Caitlin V around here and I want to share 
some of what I know with you so that you can have the best sex ever. But you'll hardly ever see me really playing a character on here. It's very uncomfortable for me. But in this instance, it is so worth it. Pushing past that awkwardness, pushing past that sort of self-awareness, self-consciousness, self-judgment, and going all the way into character is totally worth it. And I promise you, it will get easier with time. I also recommend that you, I think I had numbers at the beginning of this video and they are gone. I also recommend that you practice in full character. So practice wearing the wig, practice being that person. Practice introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Sloan Wolf. I run a logging company up in Canada and I'm just here for the weekend. My name is Marilyn Swanson. I'm a adult film star. I'm in town to make a movie this weekend. And then they go upstairs and have sexy porn star lumberjack sex. What? Yes, oh, Halloween is the best. All right, so there you are. You've communicated, you've set your boundaries, you've practiced your character, you've com fully committed to your role, you've had crazy hot sex with your partner who you've been married to for 20 years and you're laying there afterward. You're ready to get back into your normal self. What do you do? I highly recommend that you begin by recapping what worked. What were the key highlights? What did you love the most about the role play experience? This is really good for settling nerves and helping us to remember the highlights of the good things instead of focusing on anything that we felt awkward or self-conscious about. Very important. After you've celebrated, toasted, high-fived each other and gone over the things that worked really well, then you can troubleshoot the things that you'd like to do better next time. And you can begin planning your next role play adventure. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you take advantage of the opportunity that is Halloween to get outside of yourself and do some crazy, kinky, nasty, naughty, fun stuff that you having sex as yourself may be challenged to do, but you having sex as someone else is a big <laughs> Yes, 100% consent totally into it, wants it, give it to me right now, and you, who knows you as you, can maintain that image of yourself that doesn't involve rope bondage and knife play or whatever. We are all infinite beings who are capable of expressing all of the things. Go out there, get yourself a pilot costume, and have sex with your sexy stewardess wife in your make-believe cockpit. I was good, I was starting that story with pirate. Go out there and get yourself a pirate costume and have sex with a sexy wench in a fake treasure cave. All right, I'm gonna go back to doing what I do best, which is helping you live the best sex of your life. Please like and subscribe and comment below what sexy role play thing you will be getting into this Halloween. I'll see you here next week.